Hello there. Um, this is going to be a very dark subject because I'm going to talk about corporal punishment and capital punishment. So to clarify, corporal punishment being you know, physical punishment, you know, whippings, slappings. And I'm not, I'm not talking about bringing this back into schools. No, I don't think anyone can really now go along with the idea of, let's just say, a lunatic lefty teacher, transgender this or that, blue-haired, that's allowed to physically abuse uh, students. <laughs> no, 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 no. If it was back to the old days, you know, like conservative people, like you know, a masculine man who's who's going to resolve it just for, you know, the corrective action, then yeah, I guess so. But that, I think those days are gone, and, and most parents would be appalled at the thought of a teacher physically abusing their, their you know, punishing their kid. But corporal punishment for criminals. Um. And I'm also going to talk about capital punishment. So, um, I'm now fully in favour of bringing back corporal punishment for criminals. A public flogging, I think, will go a long way to correct a lot of bad behaviour. Um, and I'm going to talk about the, the petty crime here of shoplifting. So, obviously, anything that I would consider worse than shoplifting. Yes, absolutely. A public flogging. The humiliation, the pain, the... the and the, the anguish, you know, the terror of knowing that you're going to be publicly flogged, I think will go an extremely long way to uh, to persuade people from not burglarising people, not mugging, not mugging an old granny, not raping. I mean, uh, people will still do it, but they will get their they will get their just desserts, and they still go inside for it, by the way. And and then actually, probably on the last day when you're released, yeah, another one. Another flogging, just to remind you, let's reopen those scars that have been healing for the last however long you've been inside from your flogging. I know this is dark, isn't it? It's not very PG-13. Um, but I'm just all about, the last few years I've been working in retail, and I'm so sick. I'm so sick of constant um, shoplifting. The same ones doing it over and over again. So also, let me clarify here. I'm not talking about a single mum who's stealing some food to feed her kids. I'm not talking about that. But they make up, I believe, would probably be a very, very small proportion of what's realistically shoplifting. And that is a, a smackhead nicking bottles of scotch <clears throat> to pay for their, their habit. And, uh, and they do it with impunity. Absolute impunity. They know, guaranteed, that the police have got no interest in prosecuting them. And if you're slightly overzealous in trying to apprehend them in the store and they accidentally get hurt in any way, oh, the police will will go after the um, the shopkeeper or the member of staff who's there who's sick of it because obviously you know, if there's any form of bonus attached to your salary, you know that's eating into it and you're uh, working your ass off stacking shelves, which is not a job that people want to do. Uh, very few people want to do that job, you know, um, but they do it because they need to they need to do it because they don't want to sponge off the state. So, um, yeah, corporal punishment for that. Uh, right, so, be interested to hear people's thoughts on that. And I say, the me of even a couple of years ago would have gone, no way, what are you talking about, Winston? That's barbaric, we're British, we do things in a civilised manner here. But I just believe that, that anyone's faith in the, in the justice system has gone now. People know that if you get burgled, you call the police. They're not going to do anything about it. They might send the the van round to you know the pantomime of let's take fingerprints or something like that to make and give you a a crime number, which is you know your process that you just give to your insurance company and you make a claim and then they your insurance goes up obviously after that. So yeah, um, corporal punishment, good idea. Um, capital punishment. I've been against capital punishment my entire life. Unless it's for like, the last few years when I woke up and after I realised that Tony Blair got rid of uh, the death penalty for treason, which really, as long as treason is understood, that it's only the the privileged people in powers of power and positions of power and influence, like MPs, like senior civil servants, that can actually even do ter um, treason because regular folk like you and I were not in a position to be able to do that. So those, yes, I would definitely bring back hanging for that. I suppose you could have clemency, which would be down to the um, down to the king to decide. 
But uh, yeah, definitely bring back capital punishment for that. And um, the reason why I'm talking about capital punishment now, sorry, is that I was watching Lotus Eaters earlier today. And they were talking about this despicable uh, migrant from Iraq who ever since he's uh, illegally come into this country he's been sponging off of us against our will but the government takes our money under threat of violence to give it to them and just done nothing but commit crime uh, violent and um, racist crime acts of crime go check out the Lotus Eaters if you you know if you want to get the details on it and then he uh, got bored of being here and wanted to go back to Iraq, which obviously doesn't really make him a refugee, does it? Because if there's not a war there and he's prepared to go back there, then it's not really a war zone, is it? But he wants to go back there. And so he decided one way of getting sent back would be to uh, to plunge a knife into the back of a, I think a teenage lad or a student or something like that, who fortunately didn't die, but is you know, going to be, let's just say, emotionally scarred, I would imagine, for the rest of his life. Um, yes, hang him. If you absolutely know. This is this is the thing, isn't it? This is where I've always had my problem with um, capital punishment is that what if you're wrong? What if you get it wrong and you find out later on that they weren't guilty? And we know that innocent people have been killed before, have been executed, and still probably will. So perhaps there's another classification for absolute certainty. I, d I don't know, you know if this is even possible to have that defined in a law. But if it's, there is no doubt, video evidence, they're saying they did it. They say, this is why I did it. And yeah, hang them. Hang them. Maybe hang them in public at the scene of the crime. Or, and there's another category of capital punishment that I would include here. And that would be Islamic terror. Because this would also qualify, as far as I'm concerned, as Islamic terror. They have, they have earned the right to have their own their own special crime because i don't don't believe that right wing terrorism is is an issue anywhere in this world i mean there might be and eventually there probably will be some right wing terrorism if things don't course correct at some stage there's probably more likely far more likely and we see it all the time with antifa left wing terrorism but they they get pat on the back rewarded and uh, funded uh, by our institutions but i'm talking about here you shout Alu Akbar and then plunge a knife into somebody you hang and you also there's ambiguity over the sex of the hang person that's quite important here because they need to know that it could be a woman that's responsible for their death and for those that are wondering what the hell I'm talking about is that according to the Quran or Islamic law I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a scholar on this but um, they get their paradise if they die through jihad, but that's only if it's at the hands of a man. If their death is at the hands of a woman, they don't get their they don't get their paradise, and they don't get their seventy two virgins. They just get whatever everyone else gets, I guess. So um, yeah, dark subject. Be interested to hear your thoughts, people, on how you feel. Whether you know, obviously, whether you agree or disagree, or on what points you agree or disagree, but also. Is it feasible? Is it is it feasible to do this? Not not with the current system we have. We need political change, of course. And that's pie in the sky thinking at the moment. But if something doesn't change soon, then we are headed towards something very dystopian. And if there is no faith in the system, then why participate in it? And more and more people are going to just sort of check out and we will have lawlessness. We will have race, stroke, religious wars going on. It's going to be a despotic hellhole. Not the green and pleasant land that we, uh, we've we all known throughout our lives. So, um, yeah, input, much appreciated, but I don't see another way. See you soon, bye.